silver spring spider. Let it go like I always do, but it returned the next night with a You could say Rick's Rags is a rags to riches story. In 1984, Rick Stevens saw a need, and with hard work, determination, and a good pair of scissors, he and his wife built their business from the ground up. Uh, well, I worked for a factory at the time, and uh, I saw the need. That was, they were cleaning their machines, they were cleaning equipment, and, and they bought a lot of rags. And just I don't know how the idea came about, but I called my wife Penny, and I said, hey, look, I said, I got an idea. So we, so we bought a bale of rags from the Salvation Army, and, and after work at night, I'd uh, load up the sled, it was January 4th, uh, 1984 we started, and I go to the house, we lived in a trailer in Whitelaw, and I would pull them to the house, and after we had dinner, we'd sit in front of the TV and we'd cut them with scissors. That's how we started, about 75 pounds a week. Now we're doing about a million pounds a year out of this facility, and we're about 15 or 20,000 square foot of space we, we rent, we have, and we're moving rags all over the country now, as opposed to one or two customers. Uh, well, I have a lot of companies that have called us and they've said, you know, Rick, if you don't get some rags here by the end of the second shift, um, we're going to end up shutting, up shutting that shift down. And we've had, we basically, a lot of rag calls, we call them 911 calls because when they're out, they're out of rags, they're in deep trouble. Who would have thought that there's a business in rags? Well, Rick has shown us that there is, and it's been around for quite some time because I can remember in Cornhill on Seymour Ave, there would be this old man come down the street with a cart, a wooden cart and these huge steel wheels. He'd be pushing it down the street and he was the rag man. So the business has been around for a long time. It continues to this day. And it's one of those things you don't even think about until you need one, a good old fashioned rag. In 1920, Isidore Rapasati's family came from Italy to settle in Canastota. When he was 14, he was given a hoe to weed between onion rows in the Mucklands. Today, four generations later, Isidore A. Rapasati and Sons ships onions and potatoes all over the East Coast. Well, our family um, came over from Italy in the 20s. My great-grandfather, Frank Rapasati, and uh, he came over as a sharecropper, and um, basically, um, it's been a family deal since then. My grandfather Isidore um, went the next step and uh, bought farmland and uh, got into packaging. And his uh, two sons, Sam and Frank, entered the business in the 60s. And uh, I uh, came in the business in the, in the late 80s. It's just something we've always, we've done our, for the last 80 some years. Uh, a lot of Italians settled in Canastota around the, I'd say, uh, turn of the century, up until the 20s and 30s, a lot of Italians emigrated to Canastota uh, to work in the mucklands and to grow onions, uh, potatoes, celery, lettuce. Uh, there weren't many opportunities back then for Italians and that this was an opportunity. And because of Oneida Lake, we have what's the swamp, basically, due to Oneida Lake. And as we re reclaim this swamp in the turn of the century, this soil was so rich and organic, it was perfect to grow onions and uh, potatoes and and all those type of things, cabbage, lettuce, and uh, it was just a rich area to grow. And we're, you know, that's, that's basically why people came out here, Canastota, Chittenango. So we do grow a little, few onions, but basically we buy a lot of onions and potatoes from the local growers uh, here in central New York and throughout New York State. And we, uh, we do is we clean, we sort, and we package them in our label and private labels, and we distribute to chain stores and wholesalers throughout the uh, East Coast. I'm the fourth generation of Rapazzati's in the onion business, and uh, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud to have been able to enter this business, and it, it's all I know, it's all I've ever done. Since I was a kid, I worked in the back. I unloaded trucks and uh, sorted onions and did all the, everything that the people here do, I did at one time. And, and your uh, eyes don't water anymore. My, my eyes don't water anymore, you know? And uh, I, I, I enjoy it, you know? It, it's a grind, the business is a grind, any business is a grind, but, um, but uh, you know, it, it, I'm proud to, to come in the place and you have the, your name there and, and you work a little harder when your name's on the package and uh, you, you, you try to stand behind your product and uh, try to do the best job you can. Would you believe me if I told you there are miles of beachfront here in Canastota? Well, there are. Why? Because the area where onions and potatoes are grown out here are known as Black Beach. I had to ask Bob how many they process here a week. 
and it's amazing to me. They process millions of potatoes and onions. Traveling round.